Thank you for being here. Um, I travel all over the world. I go to about 14, 15 countries a year. Um, about every three or four days, I'm on a plane or a helicopter or something going somewhere or on stage. So I pick the places I want to go because life is too short to do things you don't enjoy. And I'm here not because you guys just invited me. I'm here because this is where I want to come. I actually lived in the Gold Coast for a period of time. I love Australia. And I, I think many of you, you know, when you're around something all the time, you take it a little bit for granted. And as an outsider coming in, one of the beautiful things about your culture that you probably maybe lost track of, I'm sure you intellectualize it, but you know, you know how your children, if they start growing and they want you to measure them, and like two days later they want you to measure them again, I think I've grown. <laughs> Who's got some kids knows what I'm talking about here, right? When you're a kid, everything's new. You can watch the same Disney film 52 times and it's really cool. Parents are like, oh my God, do I have to see this a second time? There's a law that destroys the quality of most people's life. It's called the law of familiarity. If you get around anything enough, you tend to take it just a little bit for granted. And one of the things I want to do here, I want to deliver for you times 10 of what you expect. I know you expect a lot. But one thing that I hope that you'll leave here out of this day with is a focus not only on how to achieve more, that's quite frankly pretty easy, but how to truly enjoy more, which most of you think is easy and most of you are not enjoying to the maximum level. And I'm here to tell you, if you don't enjoy this moment today, if you can't find ecstasy here, you're gonna be in deep trouble someplace else. You know, there's seven billion people on the planet. They all wish they lived in frickin' Australia, right? You guys just don't realize what it's really like. I mean, you're the most livable city in the world. You guys are sports fanatics. You've got an energy that's completely different than anywhere else, is it true? You guys are more oriented towards betting than any place on earth. Every Australian I know wants to bet me about something. I don't know what the deal is, I betcha. <laughs> I saw a statistic the other day that you have 20% of the poker machines in the world, even though you're 0.3% of the world population. What is this about? <laughs> but what you have that's most beautiful to me, and the reason I'm glad to be here, and I thank you for inviting me, is mateship. You have a culture that many of you don't really realize how great it is because you're like a fish in water. And this idea that we're all mates at some level that you guys take a little bit for granted is something I don't. And I think it's just incredibly beautiful. And I hope today, by the time we're done, you're not just inspired and you don't just have some great strategies to be more effective and to achieve what you want. But my real goal today is for your life to change in this day. Now, I can't do it by myself. I can deliver, and I can step up and do all the work in calisthenics, and then I get the muscle. But if you'll play with me full out today, I have some simple distinctions that are not rocket science. Did you ever notice that common sense is not too common? <laughs> it's like, to me, I like to take things that are so complex and make them simple because I found that complexity is the enemy of execution. The more complex you try to make something, the harder it is to get yourself to execute. How many of you in this room came here because you have a business and you want to grow it? I'm curious, how many came for that reason? Wonderful. How many of you came here, um, you don't own a business, but you'd like to start one? I'm curious, who's in that mode? Okay, how many of you came here because you want to just improve your life? It had nothing to do with business, something you want to change. All right, a little test so I get a sense of what to deliver for you. How many of you came here because you want to, let's say, transform the economic side of your life? You want to grow your financial side massively? Okay, how many came because you want to change a relationship? You want to enhance it, you want to bring more passion to it, or you want to create one? How many are in that mode? I'm curious. Awesome. How many came here because there's something you just want to change? You're tired of it, you want to make a shift in some aspect of your life? You guys are raising your hand for everything, you greedy bastards, you. <laughs> All this and you give me a little three hours? What the hell is this? <laughs> well, let me just tell you, I think we can find a way to touch all these things. My biggest challenge is that the shortest seminar I normally do is 50 hours, 5-0, not exaggerated, in a weekend. And the reason is I'm not into pump up. I'm not into just enthusiasm. I do believe in energy, and we're going to create that here if you're up for it, because without energy, you're not going to follow through on anything. You can attend everything you've heard here, and I'm sure you've learned some, some great speakers, but the vast majority of people will never apply it. That's why I'm here. Because knowledge is not power. Knowledge is potential power. Knowledge is trumped every day by execution. And if you really want to change your life, you can't let the learning you have here lead to knowledge or become an idiot. You gotta let your learning lead to action. And then you can become wealthy financially, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and everything else. So that's gonna be my focus with you here. And part of why I'm able to talk about this is because I've had 
this is my 39th year doing this. I started when I was three, obviously. Um, <laughs> and I mean, 39 years, it blows my mind in 100 countries. And when you're around people in 100 countries and you're seeing this much diversity, at this point in my life, nothing surprises me because every culture is different in the world, all the countries I work in, but we all have the same human needs. And so I hope I don't make any faux pas. I've been coming here for 25 years, so I think I probably won't make too many of them while I'm here. But I hope you know they won't be out of disrespect. But I really give a damn more than culture. I care more about the individual. I care about what you can do with your life and why you came here. For you to be the kind of person that parted with two days of your life and came here and invested in yourself, that makes you one of the few who do versus the many who talk. But if that few that do is going to grow into real success at the level you desire and deserve, the next level, whatever that next level is for you, I'm sure many of you are already very successful, but you came because you want more. How many came because you want more of something here? Say, I. Well, if that's true, then we just got to look at what are the fundamentals that make that happen. And a little background, how I came to be here in this 39-year journey is because I've been obsessed with a question for most of my life, and the question really is what makes the difference in people's lives? Why do some people perform so poorly consistently even though they have every advantage? And why are there some people that perform at the highest level have every disadvantage? And why are there some people that achieve everything they dreamed of and they're miserable? How many know somebody that has every reason to be grateful for their life and they're not? They're frustrated, they're pissed off, they're worried. How many know somebody like this? Say, I. It's chronic. It's chronic in the world. And to me, that's failure. If you succeed and you're not fulfilled, that's failure. Because when you're not fulfilled, you've got nothing to really give anybody else. The problem is when you are learning in the way we've traditionally learned, it was preparing you for a different world than the one we're in. You were supposed to sit passively. Would you report to your position when the bell rings, and then what do you do? Talk to your neighbor? Initiate? Make shit happen? No, what are you supposed to do? Sit down and what, guys? What are you supposed to do? Shut up. Don't talk to your neighbor. Today, if you're in business, you don't talk to your neighbor, you're out of business. Who's with me here? Say, I. If you wait for someone to tell you what to do in business, it's over. Your competition has taken you. So we live in a different world. And here's the problem. You're still learning the way you were taught to learn. So right now, you're all being very nice to me. I have no complaint. You're being very sweet. But you're sitting in a passive state. And let me explain why that's difficult. Who's ever done this? How many of you have ever gone to an environment where you learn something? Could be a university environment. Could have been a business environment. Could have been a seminar. And you learned something you truly thought was extremely useful. It wasn't somebody selling you. You're like, this is good stuff. Uh, this will change my business. This will change my life. And you were excited about it. And then you went home, and you never actually applied a freaking thing that you learned. Who's ever done this before? Raise your hand and shout, I. I. Who's done this more than once? Say, I. I. Who still feels intelligent? Say, I. <laughs> You're confused. <laughs> Now, I've done the same thing in the past, and I have to figure out what's the problem here. How, how could I be this devoted, dedicated guy, commit my money, my time, my energy, go to these events, work my tail off, take lots of notes, and then not apply it? And it's because I was learning in a passive state. Because when you're sitting like you're sitting right now, there's nothing wrong with it, but you will not, how much will you remember? If I asked you, where were you on 9-11, and you're not even Americans, how many can remember the moment when you heard about those planes crashing in the building? You could see where you were, you could remember, raise your hand if you could remember every detail. Wow, tell me where you were on 8-11. You know why? Information without emotion is rarely maintained. If there's enough emotion, if on 8-11 you met a special person in a special place and had a special experience, you might remember that because there's a different level of emotion. So one of the things we want to do is when you're learning in the traditional sense, there's not enough emotion in your nervous system. There's not even enough emotion, there's not enough energy. If there's one thing we have to have to be successful, I'm wasting my time and I'd be wasting yours if all we do is continue to talk this way. The reason is it might be interesting as we go through some of the strategies, you'll probably be excited, write them down. But in this level of energy, here's what happens. Whatever state you're in when you're learning, it gets linked to what you're learning. So if you're sitting here and you're really comfortable and you're kind of enjoying this and going, wow, this is pretty good, or wow, that's really interesting, or that could be really valuable, or damn, he has big teeth, or whatever you're thinking right now in your head. <laughs> if you're doing that in a passive state, then later on when you go to do something, you go, yeah, I'm really going to do this. This is really going to happen. And there's just no energy for it. So 
the less energy you have, the less likely you follow through and use something. How many follow here? Say I. And so, but some of you might say, yeah, but Tony, I've been here two days, and you know, it's great to be here with you, but I'm a little tired. It's late in the day, that type of thing. What you got to understand is this, as a business owner, as a professional, as somebody who's going to be the best in the world at what you do or believes that you are, there's nothing more valuable than energy. Nothing moves without it. And the lower the energy, low energy, things break down. High energy, you can build, you can create, you can do anything. Energy has nothing to do with age, food, sleep. It's something that comes with a psychology. Without the energy, anything else I'm going to talk to you about is a waste of time. So you and I need to establish a new standard for energy. Now, here's what I want to talk to you about. You have all these things you want me to give you in the next two and a half, three hours. Just make me rich, make me happy, <laughs> give me lots of sex, make sure that I feel totally confident, grow my business 100%. I'll give you a couple hours. Go for it, kid. So here's the truth. Tell me if I'm right or wrong about this. You tell me. If I were to take all the things that you say you want and I was to generalize them up into a, a deeper, richer concept of what you really want, you don't just want these individual things like lose weight or have more energy or make more money or have a better relationship. How many would agree what you really are after is an even more extraordinary quality of life that you want, as great as your life may be, you want more, more joy, more passion, more aliveness, more impact, more success. Who can relate to this here? Say I. Ah. Then in order to create an extraordinary quality of life, you have to define it. So what is an extraordinary quality of life? What would a magnificent life be? It's not for me to define. It's for you to define on your terms. To me, an extraordinary life is life on your terms. What would it look like if you really, truly, without bullshit, without exaggeration, could look yourself in the mirror and say, holy shit, look what I created. Look at the life that I've created. Now, some of you truthfully could do that now. You just don't do it enough. But I know you want more, so let's look at how to do that. I would say to you there are two master skills. I invite you to write them down. Two fundamental, fundamental skills that you have to master to have an extraordinary life that lasts. It's like getting rich. Anybody can get rich. Staying rich is a different thing, right? And I don't just mean financially rich. I mean emotionally, spiritually, physically, relationship rich, all the riches that are available to us. What are the two skills? The first skill is the science of achievement. The science of achievement. And notice I said science. The reason is because achievement is a science. And anyone can learn it. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter anything. The only thing that limits you is limiting beliefs. But once you figure out the science, for example, I just spent the last four years interviewing 50 of the most brilliant financial minds on the planet, all people who are not part of the Lucky Sperm Club, meaning they actually earned it themselves. They start with nothing, and they built billions of dollars, and I want to see, was there common denominators? And there were. And if you practice what they teach, which is what I, I put into a book, if you do it, there's zero question what you do. I applied what I've learned the last four years and tripled my net worth, which was already extremely high. And it all just came from applying what I learned, because I went to the very best on earth. Success leaves clues. Figured out what they're doing. Did it myself. And I teach other people, too, as well. Um, your body. We're all unique biochemically, but not that unique meaning there are certain fundamentals related to health, vitality, and energy. There are certain laws. If you violate those laws, you're going to have low energy and you're going to have dis-ease in your body. That's what disease is, dis-ease, right? If you align with them, you're going to have enormous amounts of energy and you're going to have an extraordinary life because you'll have the energy to make it happen. But those are principles. There are laws. You violate them, you pay the price. Whether you like it or not doesn't matter. Your beliefs don't matter. What matters is those are the rules. Now, all of you in this room, my bet is have achieved a hell of a lot of you wouldn't even come here. The people that need something like this event the most rarely come. The people that are already successful, to some extent, they want more. They've got momentum. That's why they come. But let's point out real fast what does it take to achieve. I want to give you what I believe, and you tell me if this is right or wrong, and maybe the best way to do this is to measure it. So I want you right now to think of something that you've achieved in your life that once seemed difficult or impossible to you. Something that once seemed like it was a pipe dream. Like, it would be impossible, but today, it's in your life. That might have been starting your own business, and now you have it. That might have been a person you wanted to go out with. You are hoping they'd say yes to going out. You are hoping you'd kiss them. You are hoping you'd make love to them. And now you're married to them. Good morning, good morning. And you're gone. <laughs> Law of familiarity, right? But it was once a dream. It was once, like, unbelievable. It seemed impossible. Maybe it was earning a certain amount of money. 
Maybe it was something simple, like how many of you, when you were really young, there was a car that was like, or maybe even today, there was a car that was a symbol to you of freedom or success or something. Anybody have a relationship with like that or something? Right? So you wanted it, and it seemed impossible, and then you made it happen. How many can think of something right now that once was impossible, and it's in your life today, solid, you made it happen? Let me see your hands. Say I. I. Then here's what I found. The best way to figure out how to duplicate success is to study how you've already done it. So think of that situation that once seemed impossible. It's now in your life. When it was impossible, what made it go from impossible to your life? Think about it. Well, what did you do to take this thing that seemed impossible and now it's in your life? But I would argue to you that there's three fundamental steps that everybody goes through at, at a minimum. If you took something once seemed impossible and it's there, and if we recognize what they are, you can go back to it and you know it works because you've done it before. And you can apply it to anything. And I've applied it most of my life. And by simplifying it, whenever I really want to achieve something, I come back to these three steps and I make it happen. So the first step is, tell me if this is true for you. You became obsessed by it. This thing you wanted, you didn't just want it, your hunger for it got stronger. Your desire for it got stronger. He's smiling, yes. Was it him? Good, I like that. Lucky man. <laughs> But you had this hunger, you had this desire, but it's a hunger and a desire that wouldn't go away. People always ask me, one of the most common questions I'll get asked by people in the media is, Tony, is there a common trait? Because you know, I coach all these multi-billionaires now at this point in my life. So I've got guys that have now become, I've coached them, but they're now my friends. So people like to give you an idea, Mark Benioff, who started Salesforce.com from zero, and they're doing, gonna do this year, eight billion. And he did it right out of one of my seminars. Came up and told me, you convinced me, I'm leaving my company, I'm gonna start this business, I'm gonna apply the principles you taught. He said it's called salesforce.com, I'm leaving Oracle, we're gonna do a hundred million dollars. He thought that was big, now they're doing eight billion. But I'm coaching these people, or uh, to give you an idea, Sir Richard Branson, Richard's a good friend of mine, you know, 400 companies he has. He's just, and you say, what do these people have in common? A Steve Forbes, what do they all have in common? What they have in common is hunger. A hunger that doesn't go away. Most people are hungry because things are uncomfortable, they don't like how it is, and they go to try to fix it, or they lose weight to get in the bikini for a month or whatever it is, but the hunger doesn't last. The people that are most successful on the face of the earth, I think intelligence is one of the most valuable things a human being can have and develop, but how many of you know somebody who's incredibly smart and can't fight their way out of a paper bag, right? So intelligence is not enough. What's gonna make you maximize your ability is hunger a hunger that doesn't go away. So in the area where you achieved, your hunger was sustained. You got hungry, you got desirous, but you didn't let it go. How many can relate to this when you think about this item, this situation? You were hungry, you were driven, and you wouldn't let it go. How many can relate to this? Say, I. And because you had that hunger, what did it do? It gave you the drive to do something, which is the second step. Once that hunger is strong enough, it'll pour you into action. So step two is you gotta take massive what? Massive, write down, massive action is the cure-all. We all know it, but we forget it. People say, I don't know what to do. Here's what you do, try anything. I don't know where to start. Throw up a rock, wherever it lands, start there. The next person goes by, go, I need to talk to you. You're the first person after the rock. Whatever it takes, you can get them going. But what people do is they think they have to know the answer. What they really gotta do is get into action. But it's step two has two parts. Take massive action and effectively execute because if your goal was, let's say, to see a sunset, that's your whole goal, and your plan is you start taking action by running east looking for that sunset, I don't give a shit how positive you are. <laughs> I don't care how much you believe. I don't care how enthusiastic you are. You are absolutely not going to get the result because you have the wrong strategy, right? So you have to effectively execute. But if you take massive action and what you're trying doesn't work, what should you do? If you have this big goal and you're on fire for it and you're gonna make it happen and then you try something that doesn't work, what should you do? Try something else. And what if that doesn't work, what should you do? And what if that doesn't work, what should you do? Come on guys, if that doesn't work, what should you do? If that doesn't work, what should you do? If that doesn't work, what should you do? I'll give you an example. How long would you give your average baby your average child to learn how to walk. How long would you give your average child if you say, hey, stop, you're just not a walker? <laughs> you go, what are you crazy? My kid's gonna keep trying until he or she walks. Magic formula, no one or almost everyone in the whole world walks. But watch, how many of you like to sing when no one's around? 
How many sing you sound like hell? Let me see your hat. Why aren't you a singer? Because early in your life, someone said, that's horrible. Shut up. That's terrible. Don't do that anymore. You're not a singer. And you believe them instead of to keep changing your approach until you became a singer. There's nothing you can't create if you're hungry enough, if you take enough massive action, and if you keep changing your approach until you find the way to effectively execute. Now, there is a way to speed this up, and that is to model someone who's already getting the result you want. Why reinvent the wheel, right? If you find this woman is able to have this incredible relationship with her man and she doesn't bitch about him all the time, they're in love, they're passionate about for each other, she's not lucky. You want to find out what is she doing differently with her man than you're doing, right? What's he doing differently with his woman than you're doing? Because if you find that out, you're going to find out it isn't luck. There's something underneath it all. And once you know what that something is and you effectively execute, then you only need one more thing to achieve what you want. And that's grace. Or some people call it God. Some like to call it luck. But there is an amazing thing I've learned in my life. The harder you work, the more focused you are, the more committed you are, the more flexible you are, the more grace tends to come to you. And the more you acknowledge grace in your life, that no matter how hard you and I work, there's still grace that we've even born in this time in human history. I mean, there wasn't a better time in your life or any lifetime to be an entrepreneur than there is today. There's more resources available at your fingertips, it's in your pocket, for God's sakes, than ever existed in the history of the world. And it's gonna change every aspect of your life and you wanna be ready to take advantage of that. But it's really hard to take advantage of things when you're busy not noticing all the grace that already exists. I found when you acknowledge it's there, who can align with this? Who's ever felt that sense of guidance or grace in your life? Pretty beautiful. So to achieve, that's really all it takes. How many of you did these three steps? How many of you became obsessed about this thing you wanted and wouldn't let it go, and your energy built and your desire built, and then you took massive action, and you didn't know what the hell you are doing, but you've maybe changed enough times till you figured it out, and some grace came to you, and it worked it out. Who's done this before? Say, I. Then I'm here to tell you, whatever's not in your life today that you want, go back to those three steps. As basic as that is, that's all it takes, and we make it so much more complex in our minds, and that's why most people don't achieve. They get fearful because they make it bigger than it is. And you can speed it all up by doing what I've done throughout my life. Go find someone who is the best in the world at what they're doing and suck out of their brain whatever they know. But there's a second key lesson. Because how many of you have ever done this? How many of you have ever achieved a goal that you worked your tail off to get to and then you achieved the goal and your brain said, is this all there is? Who's had this experience for? Say, I. Isn't that a brutal experience? I'd rather fail because, you know, if guys like you and I, ladies and gentlemen in this room, were to fail, you don't accept failure, right? You just get up and try something else. So failure is actually better because you could still succeed. When you succeed and you're not happy, now you're what I call technically screwed. <laughs> you really, that's demoralizing because you worked your guts out and you achieved it and you're still not fulfilled. So the second lesson I believe is even more important. And this lesson, if you can take it home tonight, I'm telling you will change your life more than anything else I know. And I know it from 39 years of working with people, including myself. The second lesson is you must master the art of fulfillment. The art of fulfillment. And that sounds so basic, doesn't it? The art of fulfillment. But notice I didn't say the science of fulfillment. Why? It's not a science. You know why? Because what's going to fulfill you, my dear, you and you, even if you're dear friends or family, is not the same. Fulfillment's an art. If you want to know what fulfills people, look around this earth. You've got to find what it is that will light you up. Because otherwise, you achieve and you're not fulfilled. As I said earlier, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. You think that if you achieve, you're going to be happy. And I'm here to tell you, you've got to happily achieve. And that sounds just like changing one word, but it's a different life. And in order to do that, you have to decide that fulfillment is even more important than achievement. And by the way, you don't have to choose. When you're really fulfilled, you tend to achieve more. But if you're going to be fulfilled by something in the future, and you can't find ecstasy in this moment, you won't find it in the future. More money, more accolades, more acknowledgement, more love, more alcohol, more sex, more whatever it is, it's not going to give you more ecstasy in the future if you can't find that ecstasy now. It's the most important decision of your life you could make today, and it could be worth the entire two days times a thousand. The most important decision that I'm offering you to think about making today, the most important decision of your life, what would it be? Some would say, who are you gonna marry? 
And I wouldn't disagree with that. That's probably one of the most important things in your life. Who you're going to spend time with is who you become. And if you pick the wrong person, life is a bitch. <laughs> or you marry him or her. <laughs> right? And if it's the right person, life can be magnificent. But as important as that is, and I've made the wrong choice initially and the right choice for the last 17 years, my wife's been the greatest gift of my life. I thank God for every day. But I'm telling you, even more important than that decision. Because your husband or wife or your boyfriend or girlfriend could go away. They could die. They could get cancer. They could leave you. They could divorce you. You're not in control. We all have the illusion of control. We have influence, not control. Not when it comes to other human beings. The only thing we control is what we think about, what we focus on, what we feel, and what we experience. The most important decision of your life is deciding you will be happy no matter what. Because unless you do that, you won't be. And I can tell you achievement is common. Happiness that is sustained is not. If you want to be an achiever, here should be your new goal. To achieve the highest level of daily happiness that any human has ever experienced. Because if you do that, you'll be the ultimate achiever. You'll dwarf everyone else, and you'll achieve as well. So I'd like, in the short time i got left, to do two things with you. I'd like to give you some tools, more tools, for changing your state so you live in a beautiful state. How many like to do that? Say I. Now, I know many of you, about 35 or 40% of you came here primarily with the idea of business and business opportunities. So why am I talking about these items? How many of you, your business is like an extension of your identity? Let me see a show of hands. Or it's like your child. How many can relate to that, right? And how many of you have some children that need some correction? <laughs> and so I do literally a, a five-day total immersion on business. So I'm not holding back, but in three hours, I'd be sprinkling it. But I'd like to plant just a couple of seeds with you. And there's a unique opportunity that I'll tell you a little more at the end that the Australian government has created that if you're an Australian citizen, who's an Australian citizen here? Awesome. You can go through my business mastery program and my Unleash the Power Within. They're, one affects your psychology, one does every aspect of business. My promise out of the business mastery program is simple. If you don't have a million dollars of value out of day one, you can leave on that point. You can even take your notebook with you. Nobody leaves. I've been doing this. I help people grow their business 30 to 130% like clockwork. And I'm talking about businesses like a company called HomeX, the largest home builder in Mexico. They directly relate to us three quarters of a billion dollars of increase in the last 24 months. Or a chiropractor's got two members of his staff, an army of two, and he's doubled his business in the last nine months, right? That's what I do. My greatest skill, and how do I do that? So it's like how I've built all these businesses, but it started with one understanding that I want you to have, and it's why I focus today on achievement and fulfillment, because your, if you look at any business and you want to know what the chokehold is on the business's growth, it's always the owner. It's always the leader, because the chokehold is in the form of your psychology and your skills. And I would say to you, jot it down, 80% of success in business is psychology and 20% is mechanics. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a big believer in strategies because I know one strategy can save you a decade of pain. One strategy can make you a million dollars. But if you have the strategy, how many have had lots of strategies in the past and then not followed through? Who's done this before? Say I. That's why your psychology is the most important part. So I'll give you the details at the end, but I want to plant the seed with you. If you want to grow your business, you've got to grow. There is no business that's going to grow dynamically and consistently and give you huge levels of financial and emotional and spiritual rewards without you growing. But you have to have a way to do it that's disciplined that gives you both the psychological change but also the skill change. Some people do have a great psychology, but they know how to make a great product or service, but they're terrible at marketing. And today, by the way, does the best product win in the world we live in today? Yes or no? No. Which product wins? The best marketed product wins. Now, long term, the best product and the best marketing wins. That would be in the past Apple. I say the past because they're slipping a bit because they've stopped innovating at the same level they used to. But the bottom line is if you have incredible product or service and you have incredible marketing, you're going to win. But we live in a world with shitty products. Who's ever seen someone as a, a product far inferior to your own product or service and they're making more business than you are? Let me see your show of hands here. Say I. Today, is it easier to market or harder? Which one? Which one? It's easier and it's cheaper, but it's less effective. 
The reason is, 15 years ago, I don't know what the numbers are in Australia, but I know what they are in the UK, I know what they are in Germany, France, and the US, and it's identical numbers. About 15 years ago, at least 16 years ago now, they did the study, and they found that it took, on average, four exposures to a product, on average, before someone then took action, on average. Does anybody know what it is today, meaning as of last year? 16. 16 exposures on average before someone responds. So today, it's really hard to succeed if you're in a situation where you're trying to market, and what are you gonna compare to? Today, people have gigantic budgets. That's why you've seen all these small businesses disappear and more big businesses show up.